everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, AK Massage Nerd. And today we have Marianne Sisko from the Upledger Institute. Hi. Hi. Yes. Welcome. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Okay, perfect. perfect. <laughs> so how did you get involved in the Upledger Institute then? Well, what happened for me is that I had injured my back when I was a young therapist. I'm a physical therapist. And I had tried, I thought as a physical therapist, I knew how to go ahead and take care of this. Yep. And I did all of these great PT things. But I was stuck with my back pain. <laughs> and I was quite upset because I was a young physical therapist and I wanted to, uh, I loved my work and I had great plans, you know, to be a physical therapist. And what happened is, is that I had sought out some chiropractic care. And when I was in the waiting room of the chiropractor, there was like this flyer on the um, bulletin board and yep. it said, Craniosacral therapy uh, demonstration. And it had like a location and a time. This was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And so I said, oh, I've never heard of that therapy, but I know I have a problem with my sacrum. I'm gonna go see if that'll help it. And so I went to this demonstration and it was actually the most boring demonstration I've ever seen. It's like watching paint dry because the therapist really didn't move her, didn't look like she was moving her hands. But what she did do was she explained about the craniosacral system, she explained about uh, the fascia and the connection of it, and it was like, wow, that, that makes like a lot of sense. So what I did is I purchased the anatomy, or excuse me, the craniosacral therapy textbook, and with the massage therapist and another physical therapist in Albuquerque, we just went through this textbook and took turns presenting the chapters to each other and would practice the techniques on each other. Yeah, yeah. And because there weren't any classes really that we were aware of. And so then, once the classes started, I went and took the classes and it made such a difference in my effectiveness as a physical therapist with my patients. And it helped me personally as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and is that your main love is uh, cranial sacral therapy? Is that your main style that well, you really love to perform? I yeah. practice manual yeah. therapy, okay. and my manual therapy that I practice is osteopathic in its origin. Okay. So I practice cranial sacral therapy, and I'm an instructor for the Upledger Institute and teach cranial sacral therapy. Okay. I also uh, practice visceral manipulation, which is also osteopathic in origin, and I present uh, for the Baral Institute about visceral manipulation, and then I also am a practitioner of mechanical link, also osteopathic in origin. And what the osteopathic piece means is that the body is connected, it's interrelated, structure and function are related, what something looks like determines how it functions. And how osteopathy can help is that it can help uh, change the structure to support more function, more optimal function, whether it's an organ system or the musculoskeletal system or the neurological system, okay? any of the systems really. Um, and then the osteopathy works with the body's innate ability to heal. So when you or I cut ourselves, something closes it up, right? And so there is the self-correcting mechanism and so we work with that and I often refer to it as like a positive car accident. So um, when there's been a car accident, there's a force that enters the body and the body takes, you know, so when someone's been in a car accident, people get out and go, are you okay, are you okay? And they're, they're like, well, yeah, I can move and yeah. everything's okay, I'm fine, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. And, but then the next day, they might get neck pain, they might get numbness or tingling. And what has happened is, is that that force, the body had to somehow organize that. It started to organize and take those forces and now we've got some symptoms. And with the osteopathic approach, and particularly with craniosacral therapy, it's a very light therapeutic force. And so the body takes that in, and then after, say, an hour session, the body will continue to use that and work with it for a couple of days to help reorganize yeah. the body so it's more functional. Yeah, getting more of the still point and stuff then, right? Well, still point yeah. is yeah. one of the techniques. Yep. Uh, it's a, a way of just temporarily suspending um, the uh, cerebrospinal fluid from being produced. Okay, it's very, it's
it's a Dr. Sutherland who is the originator of cranial osteopathy. That is his uh, technique. And it's actually been shown through some research that it helps, uh, the still point induction helps decrease um, some of the, has been helpful for patients with dementia. So in that particular study, we had a couple of uh, PhD nurses, and they did this research study and found that there was decreased um, aggressiveness from these patients when they got this regular still point, and so that was helpful for their caregivers so they weren't so combative. And there was also statistically significant improvement in their meaningful conversation. And one of our other instructors is going to um, do that study again, but they're going to be measuring more factors with it, such as immune function. So you're constantly doing studies and stuff on all this? Yes, we were active oh, so um, nice. trying to work with the research, and uh, it's hard to um, research a holistic approach because somebody's one person's back pain comes from one place and another person's back pain comes from another. Yeah. And so we are actively, with all of the osteopathic techniques, we are actively listening with our hands, letting the body self-correcting mechanism guide us, as opposed to being in a protocol, like I learned in physical therapy yeah. school. <laughs> oh, you're in that protocol. Oh, yeah. you have a total hip replacement. So therefore, and certainly some of those protocols are designed to be safe and to be um, protect in that instance the surgical procedure, but the things that might help strengthen or help release tightness may be coming from distant areas of the, the body. And the craniosacral therapy is excellent at locating those areas and helping them to release. Oh, definitely. It's such a relaxing technique too and stuff. Though. Most yeah, people find it very yeah. relaxing. We've got our booth going on over here at the massage yeah. convention. And, uh, and even with everything going on, people can still get in yes, a relaxation yes, exactly. state. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the still point induction has also been shown to be effective in um, decreasing the amount of pain that a woman feels during labor and oh. delivery by 50%. <laughs> and so that's that's quite quite a bit. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's very big. Yep. And we've also have a study published also recently on patients with multiple sclerosis. A lot of times they have bladder dysfunction with incontinence and frequency of um, voiding. And it's also been shown just the technique that we teach, or excuse me, the techniques that we teach in Cranial 1, a 10-step protocol. That's all that this particular therapist used in this study. And there was a significant reduction in um, incontinent episodes yeah. and in the frequency and in their quality of life. That's awesome. And what kind of classes do you teach then um, personally for the uh, uplift? Yes, sacral? I do. Uh, I teach cranial sacral okay. therapy one and two. One and two, okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then um, where do you see yourself in the future? Do you still want to be teaching? Oh, well, I love teaching. I'm 59. Okay. And when I turn. You don't look it. <laughs> Yeah. That. Um, you're a good interview. <laughs> um, Just being honest. What happened is when I turned 50, I'd been practicing, you know, since I was 26 as a physical therapist. And I wanted to, so like, how can I make a bigger contribution? And I've always been very good at rendering things down and to making them simple and being clear yeah. and hopefully articulate. And I decided. How can I make a bigger contribution? Something about turning 50, just like, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> gee, stop, like, I wonder how much time is left. And so I thought I could help more people by teaching other therapists. And I love that because the students that come through the class um, will share uh, with me how they've been able to help people. And that's really my main goal in being a physical therapist is to help people yeah. feel better. And it feels like I'm getting a cranial sacral treatment right now just because you're so relaxing and talking. Oh, so, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a few nuns who didn't find my talking so relaxing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what's the best way for people to get a hold of you through the Institute then? And, uh, well, yeah. to find out about the classes, of okay. course, visit upledger.com. Okay. Okay. And our 800 number, if you want to speak to a person, a, Live. What? A live? A yes, live person? I know. Yeah. It's like us in 
Nordstrom. Uh, yeah. 1-800-233-5880. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank okay. you, Ryan. Thank you. Make it very easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.